Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome to Timber Falls, home for CNC creators like you. In today's video, we're going to go over how to make vectors from a photograph or a bitmap using the bitmap to vector tool in Carfco Maker. To get started, I'm just going to import a bitmap or a photograph. We do this by going to our bitmap tab on the right hand side and selecting import. We're just going to select a picture to use for this demonstration. I have this photo of this frog kicking a soccer ball or a football depending on what part of the world you're from. When we import this bitmap it comes in on our 3D view tab. If you want to see the material view you would click the display material button. Our bitmap is still over here in our 2D view tab so we can still see that by clicking up here. One thing I would like to note is that this bitmap is made up of a bunch of different colors and the colors are all represented on this bar down at the bottom. You can actually click down and see how many colors make up this photograph. If you zoom in you can see all these different colors that make up the different pixels and stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to use the bitmap to vector tool to draw a vector around a certain color. The bitmap to vector tool is found at the top bar at the top. And the first thing we're going to want to do is reduce all these colors down. By clicking on our reduce colors button, it's going to open up this slider. And it says right here that it took the current number of colors that were in the image, 249, and it now has condensed them down to 32 colors. You can see the 32 colors down here in the toolbar at the bottom. So let me zoom in so you can see what's happening as we reduce colors. I'm going to go open that back up and as I start to reduce these colors down you'll notice that it's taking all of the colors that are very similar in color and it's combining them together. Let's go here to eight colors just stop here. I wanted to stop here because sometimes the reduced colors doesn't always do that automatically the best way. And so if you want to manually combine these colors, we have this down in the corner. We have our primary and our secondary color. If you left click on a color down in this bar, it will become a primary color. If you right click, it will become the secondary color. This little infinite looking symbol that's in the corner between these two is the linking but in order to link two colors together we need a primary color and a secondary color so to demonstrate this i'm going to combine this dark green with this olive shade of green here so we want to make the dark green our primary color and that olive shade of green i believe is is this color here and when we click this linking button you'll see that it changed that olive green to the dark green and that's represented by this link between the two colors a faster way to do this is to hold the control button down while you hold the control button down anything that you right click on will become a part of that so it will add linking colors and you can sit and add all the colors to one color then to undo it you just simply need to click that color again and it will unlink it so you can link and unlink by holding the control button and right clicking the secondary color so I just wanted to show you how to manually link your colors together so that you can do this in a in a more organized way and this will help you when you're trying to combine colors to get things to line up in this photograph if I were going to try and put some of these colors together that I thought would help draw this dark green outline I could see that this sort of this olive green here would need to be captured and when I combine that together it helps create a more solid color for the border there. You could go on to add all of these other colors in with this and that can sometimes that can help define your picture a little better. And then now that we have our colors sort of combined together, the bitmap to vector tool is going to create vectors based on whatever we have as our primary color here. So if we have this dark green selected right now as our primary color and we're going to be creating a boundary you can also create a center line but we're creating a boundary around that color and it's based on this speckle size 
Now, I wanted you to note that right up here in this corner, there's this one speckle of dark green. So if I have this speckle size set to 1, and I press Create Vectors, it's going to create a vector around that one pixel. Let's undo that. If I were to change this to, say, 12 pixels, and I create my vectors, because this one pixel is not made up of 12 pixels of dark green, it doesn't trace this dark green. And so this is an easy way to avoid capturing errand pixels or, or pictures in your, in your vector drawing. And it's a good way to eliminate just little errand dark spots that you don't actually want to capture. If we jump over here to our 3D view, we can see what we've captured so far. We also can see how straight or smooth this was. I had this set to 100% smoothness, and it did its best to try and follow these colors. But because the colors have all of these edges and they're pixelated like that, even at 100%, it still is pretty wavy. Now, I've shown in some other videos how you can use color thickening to help fix this problem. So if you haven't seen that video, check those out as well. It's in my Carveco hack series. The smoothness of the vectors is how smooth it follows the lines. If you make this 50%, it will make more angular turns at all of the lines. And you'll notice when I go back, you can see that there are a lot more angular rather than smooth. If we undo that, let's go back to 100% create those vectors, you can see the smoothness that it uses. So if your design has sharp edges and you want to have some sharp corners, you'd want to reduce this down. I find between 50 and 80% generally gives some pretty sharp corners where it needs to be and helps smooth out some of these other lines. And then if you are wanting to cut this project, you could do a V-carve. Let's just pick a 90 degree V-bit and define our material as one inch. And then we V-carved our vector image. Guys, if you found this tutorial helpful, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and share this with someone. I'd like to give a big thanks to all of our Timber Falls Elite members. You guys keep the bit spinning and we really appreciate your support. If you're interested in becoming a Timber Falls Elite, check out the link below or our website at timberfalls.us. Thanks guys.